What's going on guys? Your boy Terabyte Reacts here and I'm back with another reaction tonight. You guys are going to get loaded up with Game of Thrones videos um, for tonight, tomorrow, whenever they come out. Just watch them, okay? Just watch them. Don't complain. Just watch them, okay? Alright, so got a lot of things going on here, okay? So I did put it out there, the last tribute that I did to Hodor. I did put it out there and I told you guys to send me a video... If you can find a, a, um, a theory video for Hodor because his arc um, in Game of Thrones is very interesting arc even though he doesn't get a lot of love. Um, people were sad to see him die but they, it's like they didn't dig deeper. You know what I'm saying? Like how you know I went in to say that you know he's a very essential character even though he didn't get a lot of love. Um, in the story as in you know character development really it's just that we just we just knew he was a gentle giant um, taking Bran around he was basically Bran's caretaker right um, brought him to the three-eyed raven and boom we found out what you know what happened you know that it's the whole hold the door hold door thing you know what i'm saying and that that was that people were sad to see him go because he's been carrying brand all this time but i dug a little bit deeper to his character now we're going to jump even deeper hear what this guy has to say as in a theory has to you know different things um hold journey throughout this throughout the series okay so let's jump into it let's go you already you guys already know this is one cut I'm not editing these videos or anything. It's just one cut, so everything got to go perfect. I'm not going to be pick, pick, picking no boogers or anything like that because I just want to get these videos out. So let's get it. Hodor, Hodor, Hodor. Hodor had a secret, but he never got to tell anyone because he could only say one word. Hodor. It's not the hold the door thing. It's something much bigger. We learned about it in Bran's second to last chapter in the books, when they fight their way up to the cave. It's subtle though, so I never caught it until today. It blew my mind because it's crazy, so bear with me, it's best if I set this up. To appreciate it, you need to have a really good understanding of how warging works, the cost of this type of blood magic. When you work something too much, you adopt some of the creature's personality and mm. its identity. A piece of summer is inside Bran at all times, and a piece of Bran is in summer at all times. Here's the proof. When Varamyr Sixkins wargs his wolf, One Eye, in the books, his point of view changes. Varamyr is largely in control of the wolf, but it's no longer Varamyr's point of view. It's not the point of view of a human controlling a wolf. That's why he sees swords as long gray claws, and he sees spears as tall wooden teeth. As further proof, Varamyr even hears his own voice in the background saying, Swords. So the point of view is not Varamir's. It's not the point of view of a human controlling a wolf. It's sort of a new, blended identity with the human Varamir as just one of the voices in its head. A dominant voice, but not the only voice. We see the same thing with Bran. When Bran is in summer, it's Bran's POV chapter. But the thoughts are not Bran's. He thinks of Shaggy Dog and Ghost as his brothers, as them, Nymeria, and Lady as his pack. He's thinking like a wolf, and in Book 3, Bran spends way too much time in Summer, and he almost drowns. Bran almost forgets who he is. He's inside Summer, and he hears Hodor's voice. And he hears his own thoughts, too. A boy's thought, not a direwolf. Presumably, telling him to back out of Summer. It's been too long. But the POV resists. The POV wants to stay in Summer and feast on the kill. When Bran goes into Summer, he's supposed to do stuff like mark trees, catch rabbits, and bring them back uneaten for the humans to eat but he always forgets because he's not truly Bran when he's inside Summer. Right. That's why Jojen at one point says, tell me who you are. And Bran says, you know, I want you to say the words, tell me who you are. Bran, Bran and Stark. And who is Summer? My dire wolf. Bran the boy and Summer the wolf. You are two then. Two and one. Bran and Summer are wed for life, an exchange of souls, a new blended identity that I'm going to call Bummer. Bummer does things that Bran would not. Like after he fights another warg, one-on-one, -on -one, dire wolf versus wolf, Bran wins the fight, or Bummer wins the fight, and then he lifts his leg, and he pees on him. So the point is, when you warg an animal, you aren't completely in control. You are a new, blended personality. And on top of that, you adopt some of its personality into your own human skin. Elk and deer or prey, wear their skins too long, and even the bravest man becomes a coward. Wolves wed for life. 
The wolf is part of you from that day on, and you're part of him. Both of you will change. And it's not just wolves. The same thing happens with other animals, like ravens. Bran feels children of the forest inside the ravens, and the three-eyed crow explains that all the ravens have children of the forest inside of them, all of them, shadows on the soul. So it's not just an exchange of personality, it's literally an exchange of your very souls. Working is a very powerful, but very dangerous blood magic. And the exchange goes both ways. We saw one side of this in Bran. Bran often felt a part of him wishing that he could go hunting, because a piece of summer lived inside Bran. And we saw the flip side with Rickon, or rather Shaggy Dog. Rickon was a neglected three-year-old kid, so he was scared. He was wild. A piece of Rickon lives inside Shaggy Dog, so Shaggy Dog became wild too, and Shaggy Dog attacked three people, including Maester Lewin. This is also why Bran can feel Summer's fear, even when he's not warging Summer. They are always connected. According to the Three-Eyed Crow, if Bran were to die, a piece of him would remain in Summer, so even after you die. And he's right, we've got proof. Aurel is yeah, this wild or free this. folk. I know this he is often what he's warged talk about. Well, after Aurel died, hated Jon Snow, John and Jon Snow the... killed Aurel. Yeah, As Aurel was dying, he warged John. into his eagle and lived a second life inside the eagle. That's why the eagle attacked Jon, because the eagle now hated Jon, just like Aurel hated Jon. Eventually, Faramir Sixkins overpowered Aurel. He took the eagle on for his own, as one of his six skins. And in time, Faramir found himself hating Jon as well. So in this example, the warg adopted the hate of another creature. Well, this is a Song of Ice and Fire. An important theme of this story is balance. Restoring balance, fixing the seasons. We'll get to that in the video about the wall coming down. But the point is, balance is a big theme of the story, which is why George R. R. Martin wrote in so many examples of balance. We've got the good bastard of the north and the bad bastard of the north. Ice preserves, but fire consumes until there's nothing left. And Mira both loves the mountains of the north and hates them, which confuse Bran. Love and hate? Why can't it be both? If ice can burn, then love and hate can mate. So George gave us an example of a warg adopting hate, which makes you wonder, what about love? Did a warg in this story ever adopt or transfer love? Let's take a look at Bran and Hodor. This is going to blow your mind. In the books, Bran had a crush on Mira. It starts the first time he sees her. She catches him staring across the table at her. She smiles, Bran blushes, and he looks away. Later, Bran tells the reeds about a no reoccurring haunting dream of the- way, bro. How do they not show this in the show, man? How do they not adapt stuff like that in the show? That would have been so important because... <sighs> I mean, are you kidding me? How hard would have would that have been for them to show something like that? They didn't have to show it like across a table or anything like that. They had plenty of chance to show uh, something to that. Because remember at the end when Mira when when they're back at Winterfell and and Mira went to see Bran at, before she left. And I was like, that would be so cool if those two ended up together because um, it seemed like Mira developed some really strong feelings for Bran. Bran, him and his stoic self now because he's the tree-eyed raven, he's forgotten who he is somehow. You know what I'm saying? Well, not entirely, but you get what I'm saying. It would have just been nice if they gave this part of it a, a little nod so we knew that some sort of something was there because... You kind of felt their connection during the show, but at the same time, this would a scene like this would have confirmed, you know, both of their feelings. That's all I'm saying. I'm mad. I'm mad. The three-eyed crow. In one of the dreams, the crow pecks a hole through his skull and pecks out his brain. It's trying to get him to open up his third eye. It tells him, fly or die. The dream terrifies Brandon for a long time. It's not a one-time thing. It's part of his story for a while. So it's a pretty big deal when he finally shares this dream with Jojen and Mira Reed. When Mira responds, you'd think Bran would be listening, but nope, he's only half listening because he's watching Mira shake out the tangles of her hair. At Queen's Crown, Bran is scared, but he doesn't want to say so in front of Mira. And at the night fort, Mira climbs the wall to do some reconnaissance, and Bran wishes he could stand on top with Mira, a nod to his desire to climb, his desire to see, and possibly his desire to be by Mira's side. Later in the cave, Bran imagines how he will live on long after Mira has passed away. And this upsets him. He doesn't want to. But he doesn't say anything because he does not want Mira to think he was some weepy babe. And last, Mira gets upset about Jojen. Bran wishes he could put his arms around her and hold her. 
But keep in mind, Bran and Mira start the story at just 7 and 15 years old. They're around 10 and 18 by the time they get to the cave. So Mira is a woman grown by then, but Bran's just a little kid. He's got a boyhood crush on a cool older girl, nothing more. Except one time. During their fight up to the cave, Bran wargs Hodor. Towards the end of the fight, Bran is still inside Hodor. He looks at Mira, and out of nowhere, he wonders what Mira would think if he should suddenly tell her that he loved her. Whoa. That line felt like it came out of nowhere, because he went from a boyhood crush to the L-bomb, love. So I googled it, and I'm not alone. Other people felt like this was strange. It makes you wonder, who was thinking that? Who loves Mira? Was it Bran or, or Hodor? Hodor? Because Hodor is an adult. Assuming he's around the same age as Ned, that'd put him at around 33 years old at this point. Did Hodor love her? And if so, did he adopt that love from Bran, or did he love her all along? There are a few ways to interpret this. Bran has a crush on her, and they're in the middle of a fight for their lives, so maybe Bran's adrenaline is pumping. He's got heightened emotions, so he thinks about love. It could be. And some people claim that it has to be this way, since it's Bran's point of view chapter. And because when he works Hodor, Hodor sort of hides in the back of his mind. But like we said earlier, it's not really Bran's point of view. Inside Summer, the point of view is Bummer. And inside Hodor, the point of view is not truly Bran, it's Brodor. Brodor. So there is a good chance that Bran's love transferred over to Hodor, or into Brodor, because a piece of Bran lives inside Hodor. And this is right up George R. R. Martin's alley. Love and hate, done in reverse, balance from a storytelling perspective. I dig it, or rather, I dug it, last night. Now, I've got something better. Let's go back to that quote about Bran wanting to hold Mira. If you keep reading, Bran considers using Hodor to do it. That'd be weird, and the thought makes him feel strange. Bran lingers on this thought for a bit, but it's very weird wording. Why did he feel strange? Maybe because a piece of Hodor lives inside Bran too, and that piece of Hodor is also thinking about Hodor going over and holding her. Because at this point, Hodor loves her too. But why does he love her? Is it just because he adopted it from Bran? No. I found clues that Hodor loved Mira all along. Earlier in the story, Mira is out doing her thing, then she comes back to the Tumbledon Tower. As she walks up, Hodor freaks out. He jerked to his feet, almost hitting his head on the barrel vaulted ceiling. Hodor, he shouted, rushing to the door. When she walks in, Hodor, Hodor, the huge stable boy said, grinning. He's grinning. Mira Reed was 16, a woman grown, but she stood no higher than her brother. So Hodor is pumped that Mira is back, and George R. R. Martin conveniently throws in that she's a woman grown and references her height. All of this connects her to Hodor. Is there something going on here? Why was he so excited to see her? Well, soon after, Mira tells a story about the Night of the Laughing Tree. That's my father's man you're kicking, howled the she-wolf. It's a love story about Lyanna Stark and Rhaegar Targaryen, the song of ice and fire. Mira pauses halfway through the story, confused, like, Bran, your father never told you this tale? It was old Nan who told the stories. Mira, go on, you can't stop there. Hodor must have felt the same. Hodor, he said. Then, Hodor, 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 Hodor. Oh my god, Hodor is digging the love story because Hodor is secretly a romantic. Hodor secretly loves Mira Reed. Hodor may have adopted Bran's puppy love for Mira once Bran started warging him. That's probable. But these scenes where he is excited that Mira returns and where he cries out for her to continue the love story, they happen before Bran ever works him. So Hodor may have loved Mira uh, all along. It happened Either way, before. when they fought their way up the hill, okay. Hodor had a secret. That's why Brodor wondered what Mira would think if he were to tell her that he loved her. Unfortunately, the only word that Brodor could use was Hodor. <sighs> um, okay, so that happened. <laughs> yeah. So um loved it. Loved it, by the way, loved this theory video. That um that Hodor loved Mira. Um learned a lot more about what was going on in books. Yeah, but I want to see a trip a a theory video on how Hodor actually became. You know. What's the relationship? Well, how strong was the relationship between him and Bran? Why did why what's with the worgen into Hodor and 
why did he have a seizure at that very moment with his eyes turned over for that matter saying hold uh, um hold the door hold the door hold the door that's what i want somebody to make a theory video about i know that he's not dead in the books yet okay because he died in what season six or oh yeah in season six so it's been a while it, it, it did been a while and i know the books are not up there yet like hodor is still alive in the books so it's crazy i like that theory i do um <clears throat> I would rather see Bran with with Mira. Um, that would be, and it's obvious that she she would like Bran more in this situation. I don't think she would like Odor. It's my opinion. Um, I'll just keep it to myself. Whatever, it's already out there. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. This has been great. Um, three videos tonight. Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, it's very hard for me to do those history and lore videos because they're an hour long. Um, reason being, I don't have a lot of time, but I am going to make sure that I get <clears throat> at least one of them out to you by the, by tomorrow or <clears throat> Sunday. Okay. So just bear with me. I will get them done. It's just that it's, it's tough. It's really tough, you know, so I just want to stay. Um, poor, cause, cause right now you guys don't even notice, but I'm a little under the weather right now. My voice, <clears throat> my throat is kind of hurting, but I'm here talking to y'all, getting these videos out for y'all. Okay. So it's going to be a busy weekend for me. I'm definitely going to get some videos up and stuff like that. I got to get the Ippo super reaction out and some other stuff. So just bear with me. Thank you guys for tuning in once again tonight. You get Game of Thrones stuff. Tomorrow night, you probably won't. <laughs> but, but enjoy the videos while they last. Keep making the suggestions for me to react to. I save them. I actually bookmark them on the computer. And I'm getting through them one by one by one. Okay, so keep sending the suggestions. Eventually, I'll get, I'll get to to yours okay so don't worry about it i haven't forgotten about all of them all the links that you guys send me i save them okay that's why i tell you to post the links because i don't want to look up the wrong video and then react to the wrong video if it's a video there's a video you want me to react to post the link it's better for me okay so see you guys on the next one keep it real always comment like subscribe if you have to if you haven't yet, okay? Hit that notification bell. You already know who it is. It's your boy Terry by Reacts. And peace out.